Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to start you reading now. Hopefully I'll be able to speak properly. And uh, yeah, so I'll just stop. Okay, so the first card you've got for your past is uh, the Page of Wands. Um, okay, so before I say anything about that, um, First of all, there's definitely conflict here, right in the middle. You know, you've got, you've got the two of swords there. Um, you know, when you've got that, whatever you've got in the center is really, usually, it's, it's the center card. It's the most important card. Everything kind of hinges around that card. It's like it's the key card, um, of the spread. So there's that. There's like a conflict. And, uh, there, there's lots and lots of movement here as well. There's a special, movement. I'm seeing two kinds of movement. I'm seeing inner movement in you. You've really changed. You you had one, uh, it feels like you had one set of beliefs or something like that and now you've changed and it's a big set of beliefs. It's not like, like a small thing. This is a huge shift inside you um, and it's very, very crucial for you. You're on one side, now you're on the other side with something and that that's what this Two of Swords is about. And um, I'm seeing a bit of outer movement as well, and there's there's a pivotal time coming up where you're going to um, move. It doesn't have to be an actual house move, um, but it, it's something like traveling a bit or moving. It doesn't have to be far, but there's some time where you'll be in a different uh, place or a different um, atmosphere or something like that, and something special is going to happen at that time. So, okay, so I'm not going to say any more about this whole thing because I'll just confuse you. So I'll go back to this page. Sorry, I, I just see so many things at once and I have to just blah, blah, blah. Right, so so back to this page of wands. Okay, so what I'm getting here is it, it really feels like there's a little bit of distance, a bit of emotional distance. Uh, yeah, there's emotional distance and there's, there's time distance as well. What I mean by that is... Um, it feels like, firstly, it feels like this is about an established relationship, a proper relationship. And there's some kind of emotional distance, there's some kind of communication problem or something like that. And they're very, very busy. I'm getting they're very busy, I think. Uh, I, I think you're probably very busy as well. So there's some kind of issue you need to communicate. And uh, you haven't had the time to do that. That's one. But also there's this, there's this feeling that um, they know that there's this big block there. They know that there's this big communication block there. And they're not quite sure how to handle that or they don't quite know what to do about that. That's kind of what I'm getting here. You know, pages are students and, you know, they're still learning. They're not sure what to do yet. So I think that's how they're feeling about this communication problem or this distance, whatever this is. And there's a little bit of put keeping the head in the sand as well over this. It, it's it's like, oh, this is just too hard. I, I, I don't want to deal with this. Maybe they're mad at me. Maybe they're expecting a great big, huge intervention or something like that. And, and I'm just too busy. I'm just too tired. I know there's a problem. I know there's a problem. Um, but I, I can't deal with this right now. And I think the fact that they're a bit like that and maybe they're not explaining why they're feeling like that makes you feel even more distant because you might be thinking, well, they, they just don't want to talk to me. They just don't want to deal with this. I'm trying to talk to them. I want this talk to happen. I don't want this distance to be here. But it feels like they don't really even care about that. that that's the kind of thing I'm getting. Um, so... Okay, so if that's what you're in the middle of right now, um, if, if this is um, what's happening, because it does feel quite immediate to me, uh, especially if you're in, an, in a couple, in a very established relationship. Um, yeah, this is what I'm getting. This is this time coming up for you. I'm seeing this here. There's a time coming up for you where um, you, you'll, you'll be in a different place and you'll both have the time to be able to talk about this. Um, and yet yeah, they're going to choose to talk to you. They just need to have their time to think and then when they've got that time, they've got that space, uh, they're going to want to start to talk to you. It's like they're going to want to try to find their way back to you emotionally because if you look at this page, he's a little bit lost, you know, he's by himself um, and it's like, where am I? That's how they're feeling right now but they're going to try and find their way. They're going to make an effort actually. They're going to make an effort to try and connect with you again. It might surprise you because you think, oh, they'll never do that. They never communicate. They are going to do that. That that's what I'm seeing, and I think I think that's going to make all the difference with you when they do come and talk to you or really open up, because 
you know, e even if they can't communicate properly, even after that, the, the fact that they're going to try, that they want to be more open, they want to understand, they want to listen, they want to talk, that's half the battle, I think, because they're genuinely interested in, in changing and listening. Not right now, but they will be. And all they need is this change of scene at this time where you're going to be away. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if you're planning on being away for a few days. Might just be a day, might just be an afternoon or something. But it's a change of scene and you'll have time and you're going to be able to talk and have that communication. And that's when they're going to open up, uh, whenever that is. So if you can see that time ahead of you, if you've got something planned with this person, that's when they're going to start to open up and make this effort. And uh, yeah, you can see that on the Knight of Cups. This is them. They're coming forward. Uh, they're offering you emotion, openness. Uh, so yeah, and, and, and there's definitely a future here. You know, you might be worrying that oh, if we can't even communicate, is there a future? I think there is. I think there is. I, I think they've had a lot of problems in communicating. But I think after that breakthrough happens, I think it'll be a lot easier for them after that, if this is resonating with you. So so just think about that. Just keep that in mind. It, it doesn't feel as bad as, as what you're imagining if you're in this right now. Um, yeah, I just have to say this. I'm just getting this. I think you're always going to have to watch um, to watch each other. You know, you might. I think you're always going to have this kind of tendency to drift apart emotionally, because um, I, I think I'm getting this that you're both quite busy, and it's hard for you to find the time to actually sit down and, and have a proper conversation or to understand each other properly or to even have the headspace or the time to do that. So you're just going to have to watch that. You know, it might be that you set aside a certain time or you make sure that you have a uh, time that's that's open so that you can have that openness between you. And um, so just just something to think about if that's you. Um yeah with this with this Knight of Cups, um I'm getting a very difficult person here, actually. This is someone different. This isn't this um, relationship. This is someone from your past. Very difficult. I'm getting a show-off. I'm getting a show-off here. A show-off. That's This night can be like that sometimes. I'm getting a show-off and I'm getting some kind of difficult communication. It's like a difficult communication. Might have something to do with money. Because um, my eyes going up to that nine of pentacles, I can't help it. It's like I have to look at that right now. So I, I think they're related. And yeah, you, you're really starting to get yourself back together money-wise. I'm seeing that. You're planning for your future. I'm getting that. Organising yourself, making sure things are legally in the right place. It might be that you're doing a will or something like that. I don't know. But, you know, you've got, um, you know, justice there as well. So something legal or making sure everything's done properly to the rule. I'm getting that. So, um, yeah, if, if that's you, if you're planning things so that, you know, your future's a bit more like uh, the woman in the Nine of Pentacles, um, someone who doesn't have to worry anymore about money, um, you're doing well. You're heading there. You're getting in that direction or you're going to that direction, I should say. I mixed up my words there. You're getting there. You're heading in the right direction. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so, yeah, you, you've been through a lot of hard times financially, I think. And uh, and that's because you haven't been this organised, but now you are. Um, yeah, this is... OK, so there's this really, really difficult person here. Um yeah, they, f they feel as if they deserve something. They feel as if they deserve something from you, specifically from you. Or, or maybe they think that, that, you know, you owe them something. Or, yeah, this is a really entitled person, very entitled. Uh, arrogance, I'm getting that as well. I'm very arrogant. I deserve this. I should have this. I, I have, I want everything. That, that's the kind of thing I'm getting coming from them. And, and just looking down at the justice card, this might be someone you're divorced or who, who you've divorced or you've separated from them or you might be going through a, a separation process right now. It feels like you're going through something right now, actually, because, you know, if they're trying to get this from you or, or you know, if they think that you should give them this, you're obviously still going through something with them or they're around your energy. Um, so I think I think the advice for you is here is... Um, is uh, it's in the card that's right in the middle of this spread again. It's in the Two of Swords. Um, 
you know, stand up for yourself. Don't, don't be a pushover against this person. If they try and say, I want this, I want this, don't listen to that, don't listen to that, have your swords up, get ready for the battle with this person, that's what I'm getting. And yeah, they, they, they think they're right. They think they're right. And they're going to keep on pushing things. They're very pushy. Push, push, push. I'm getting that push. And you've got your swords up and you're saying, no, no, I'm not going to let you push me. That's how you have to be with this person. And, you know, I, I think with you, because because you keep on coming up as the nine of pentacles for some reason, um, you know, you, you, you're looking toward having that easy life, that stress-free life. And we all want that, of course. But um, I think the message here is, don't give in for an easy life. Don't just give in for that easy life because you're not going to get an easy life if you just give in to them. You know, they're going to be like, oh, I want this, I want this, I want this. And if you just sit back and you say, oh, I'm just so exhausted with this. It just won't leave me alone. Okay, whatever you want, just leave me alone. Okay, you can have whatever you want. That's what they're trying to get you to say. That's what they're trying to get you to say. So don't do that. Um, now, I know there are these two swords here. And again, I'm looking right in the middle. That doesn't mean you have to battle them. It just means that you have to stand up for yourself and, and put a shield in front of yourself and make sure they don't grab what is yours. Um, I'm really getting that very, very strongly for someone. So I really, really hope that helps someone. You want to be easygoing. You want an easy life. If you give in to them, you're not going to have an easy life. Um, the way to an easy life is to put up with things now, put up with a problem, have some kind of battle with them or whatever it is uh, to, you know, to get rid of them in the end. It sounds horrible, I know, but I hope that makes sense to you. Okay, so yeah, so the first card you've got for your presence, this Nine of Pentacles, this beautiful woman, very peaceful scene, very peaceful. She's got everything. She really has everything. Um, it looks like she does, but she's actually been through a lot to get to where she is. She's had to travel. Here's this traveling again, traveling, moving. It hasn't been easy to get to where she is. She's had to come quite far because, you know, if you look at this card, there's a house, a very tiny house. It's just up on the horizon and it's far behind her. So she's had to travel from her home quite far away uh, to get to where she is. So I think you might have left some people behind. Yeah, two very, very separate, very different parts of your life. And this is really, um, you know, I, I'm seeing that here. I'm seeing that in the Two of Swords as well. Two sections, one on one hand, the other on the other hand. So you've got one half of your life uh, in your past where I, I think you were in a group. I'm getting a group here. They had a belief system, might be a religious system, a belief system or something like that. It might be a church, a religious group. Because again, if you look at this card, right on the horizon, again, you've got these two trees here and uh, they represent the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. So it's the Garden of Eden. So religious might be a religious group, might just be a cultural group or a belief system that you've moved away from. Um, there's some kind of cultural change uh, that's happened in your life and you've got the first half where you believed all that you've got the second half where um, you, you believe differently now and um, you've turned your back on something you've turned your back on all of that because you know she's got her back to these trees in the house and everything um okay so yeah th this this relationship um that I, I was getting in in the page of wands um this person who you're having a bit of a communication problem with, but I am seeing positivity there. They belong to your new life. And, and this really arrogant person who wants something from you, they belong to your old life. So it might be an ex you're separating from because you're separating, you're severing ties with a whole life that you've had and they belong to that life. Um, but yeah, they're, they're hanging on. They, they want what they want. It, it's funny I said hanging on because I'm was just i just looking at the hand to man down there. But yeah, they're hanging on for what they can get. They're hanging on and you're really going to have to stand up against that. You're going to have to stand up against that, which, which is what, again, what this woman's doing on the Two of Swords. She's standing up for herself. She's shielding herself. And uh, yeah, that's how you're going to have to be with this really arrogant person. Uh, you might have to block them. You know, she's got a blindfold on. So yeah, I'm really getting this. No, 
you're not coming back again. You've ruined my past life or you've tried to do that. You've messed it all up. You're not going to ruin this one. You're not going to ruin this life. You're not going to ruin the relationship I've got now. You're not going to come between us. You're not going to get my money. You're not going to do that. Yet yeah, very, very greedy, very greedy, very entitled person. Uh, and again, you've come really far to get to where you are now, like that woman. So, you know, I'm getting job changes here, work changes. You've had a few work ups and downs, money ups and downs. You've worked for what you have. You've worked for what you have. You deserve what you have. They don't deserve what you have. They don't deserve what they're going after. I know that sounds bossy and I'm really being forceful here, but I'm really feeling this. So, I guess just, just something else I'm getting here as well. This, is, this isn't going to be for everyone. And I'm, a, I'm kind of a bit worried about saying this, but I, I feel as if I have to say this. Um, if this person, this really entitled person uh, says that you are, or if anyone else says it to you, if anyone comes and says, oh, I'm going to take you to court. I'm going to take you to court. If you don't know what I say, I'm going to take you to court. I'm going to call the police because I'm seeing that justice card there. I'll take you to court. I'll get everything. If if they're being like that, um, obviously I'm not a lawyer, but this is just what I'm picking up here. I don't think they're in a very strong position. I don't think you want to take that seriously if they do say that to you, if they threaten you with that. I'm getting someone who, yeah, they've got a very strong bark. They've got a very strong bark, but they don't have a very strong bite. <laughs> but that's what I'm getting. And, you know, look at this night again. Look at this night again in the Night of Cops, showing off. I'm all bright and shiny. I, I'm all show. I'm all show. So, so that's what I'm getting with them. So try not to stress if they start to threaten you with things. They might, you know, if you resist them, they might up it even more. They might say, oh, I, what, what can I do next? I know. I'll threaten them with court. That'll make them do what I want. It's not going to work. It really isn't. Now, don't stress if that's what they do, I don't think they've got a leg to stand on, really. They really, really don't. But when I say don't stress, I don't mean be all laid back like the one in the Knight of Pentacles. You do have to come up against them. You do have to stand your ground with them. But again, if they start to threaten you, I, I don't think they've got any reason to, to do that. So I really, really hope that makes sense with someone. Again, I'm not a lawyer, so don't don't hold me to that. I'm really stressed now, but that, that's what I was seeing. That's what I was seeing. So, okay, so the last card you've got for your present is uh, this Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, hold on to your fortune. Hold on to what you've got. Hold on to what you're, you might You might think, oh, I don't have very much. I don't have a fortune. A lot of people want what you've got. A lot of people want what our money. That's why people advertise. That's why you see it everywhere. Uh, doesn't matter what you've got or what you don't have. Someone else wants it. Uh, and this person wants it. This snake, this very, very difficult, entitled snake wants what you have. There's a snake on this wheel coming around. I'm just looking at that right now. Uh, I'll lift it up so you can see there's a snake. And uh, they're not trustworthy. They're not trustworthy. They're very um, sneaky. Uh, they, they're going to try and get what they want. They think they deserve what you have. They think they deserve what you have. I, I don't want to talk about them anymore, but um, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open for this snake. Um, and, and they don't have a leg to stand on. Snakes don't have legs. <laughs> they don't have a leg to stand on if they want to threaten you um, with your court or anything like that. I, I feel as if I just have to say that again. You might be a bit stressed about the, that potential. Um, so yeah, just, just looking at this wheel again, um, and I'm looking across, I'm looking at the wheel and I'm just looking at the secrets between the wheel and the hanged man there right next to that. And, and when I look at the two of them together, it's, it's totally different to how I was feeling before with that snake and all that. Um, yeah, very, very warm with this big orange wheel, very welcoming. And top in this blue sky, I'm just looking at the clouds now, fluffy clouds, lightness, openness, openness in the sky. So this is all about this open conversation that you're going to have with this loved connection that you've got. Traveling, you know, we've got the sky there as well. 
Um, so you're going to go somewhere with them. It doesn't have to be traveling very far, uh, just a different change of scene or something like that. And then you're going to open up, then you're going to come closer. And, and your relationship's going to grow. Very, very warm. Um, yeah, I'll just show you how I'm seeing this. I just want to show you this. So yeah, there's this big orange wheel. And you know, orange is obviously made up of red and yellow. So, and yellow is all about communication. So you're going to have that communication. Red is about passion. So when you mix the two of them together, you've got this beautiful, very amazing communication, very amazing connection, and it's going to grow. Because, you know, in the hand man as well, you've got the yellow shoes, uh, yellow's communication. Shoes are about movement, walking, traveling to somewhere. So communication when you travel. And red, again, red legs, passion. Very fetching leggings is wearing, very fashionable. So, so yeah, and, and the feet, the yellow feet are pointing up to the leaves, pointing up to the growth. So out of the communication, out of the yellow, you're going to have growth. There's growth in this relationship. There's a future in this relationship. Beautiful. Um, yeah, when you're having these conversations, um, really listen to them, really listen to what they have to say. There might be a little bit of a difference. I don't know if it's a cultural difference or it's a way they say things, language, it might be. Uh, it might be an actual literal language barrier or it might just be that um, they have different meanings of things, they mean something different. Because I'm getting, I think you might have had a conversation in the past with them where they've said something and you've taken it the wrong way or a different way and they've come back and said, no, no, that's not what I meant. I didn't mean that at all. I meant this. I, I, I didn't mean that. So just, just be aware that that might happen again in this conversation. So don't, don't jump on things. Don't, don't say, oh, oh, I'm really upset. You said this. Just be open. If they say something that bothers you, just question them in a nice way. I'm seeing lots of very, very nice openness there. And and they want to do the right thing. They're, they're trying to do the right thing in, in this conversation. They're trying to listen. They're trying to be open. Um, just another little thing I'm getting here um, in the Wheel of Fortune. Um, just looking at all of these people. Um, well, not people. They're kind of different uh, characters around the edges. One's a person. One's an angel. 